Well, that's the perfect song for sure. Welcome back to the Big Sunday Show, Saturday Night Live, seemingly mocking free speech last night while taking aim at Elon Musk's attempt to take over Twitter. The billionaire CEO of Tesla is dominating headlines, vowing to change the social media platform to ensure freedom of speech if his $43 billion bid is accepted. Elon Musk offered to buy Twitter for over $40 billion so he can loosen its free speech rules. That's how badly white guys want to use the N-word. <laughs> and come on, Elon, Elon built electric cars, he's going to Mars. Why is he even involving himself with Twitter? It would be like if the Prince of England gave it all up just to marry an actor from Suits. <laughs> Well, Joe, you know, I have to go to you, my favorite media connoisseur. So first of all, I watched that entire segment. And, you know, I can tell you that while they are notorious for their white wing, wing criticism, before that, they were yeah. talking about President Biden's absent-mindedness, the fact that Vice President Kamala Harris is completely absent just in general. But then they went on to Elon <laughs> Musk. And instead of talking about the entire debacle, they turned it into a racial issue. What was your take on that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't get the joke that uh, white guys really want to use the N-word. So Elon Musk is now a racist. I, I, I didn't quite get that. But I don't get Saturday Night Live lately in, in general. It, it's such a shame what's happened here. And, and again, all they did was echo what we saw on CNN and MSNBC the entire week as far as Elon Musk buying Twitter. I, I think it was Max Boot, Washington Post, who said that democracy is at stake if, if Elon Musk somehow is successful with this bid. Democracy is at stake. I mean, where, where are you getting this from? Free speech, more speech is a good thing. But, you know, the, the days of like Belushi and Bill Murray and Eddie Murphy and Dana Carvey, Will Ferrell, I never missed an episode during that 30-year stretch. The show was that good because it was unpredictable, and now it's become the one thing it can't be, and that is predictable. And the best comedy is built on surprise, you know, being fearless, not being politically correct, and that's what Saturday Night Live has become. And, and you know, the writers down there might as well just over at 30 Rock walk across the hall and start writing for MSNBC instead of SNL because it's almost impossible to tell the difference at this point, Nicole. Absolutely, Joe. Well, Alicia, so the First Amendment protects U.S. citizens um, from censorship and protects the right of free speech. And Elon Musk thinks that Twitter is really a de facto public square. But is it really? Well, I, I guess it's according to the rules of the day, right, Nicole? Because the rules seem to change depending on who's delivering the message. Um, one thing that I find fascinating, and it wasn't too long ago that Elon Musk was quite the hero on the left because of his right. feelings about climate change and taking action and, and being outspoken about that. But then he started to say things that made folks uncomfortable because he did not think, it, and he does not think, it's a good idea to cancel people off of Twitter in a space where other people can see varying points of view and those varying points of view are getting less varied right because the the limits are coming from people who are just kind of tisk tisking some of the messaging that's coming there very interesting well it sure is david so twitter speaking of twitter is actually getting a little bit more uh, media attention right now because elon musk responded to a tweet that was put up by david sachs and he said if the game is fair elon will buy twitter if the game is rigged there will be some reason why he won't be able to we're about to find out how deep the corruption goes and elon musk responded indeed so david what do you make of that well, he's got 82.2 million followers, so, you know, a simple word can do a lot when Elon speaks. Uh, they can try to cast this any way they want, but I see two stories here, and I think the one that's being ignored is that this is a business story. Elon Musk's approach to Twitter offering to buy, and when he began buying the stock, all the way through April Fool's Day, went up $6 a share. It peaked the following Monday and Tuesday. So if I had Twitter stock, I'd be happy. The business story is he makes money out of this, no matter which way this goes, and we'll see how far the left will go to protect what they consider their platform. I think this is a good business deal for Elon, no matter how you look at it. He's going to make money. Vanguard made a big splash, becoming a 10.3 percent older. But that's what Vanguard does. They have to go after Elon because they have no choice. He has suddenly ventured into their world, and they don't have control for him or control of him. And I might, I'll make a recommendation to everyone out there. You want to get a little insight? He just did a TED talk with Chris Ann 
Anderson's, 52 minutes long. It's worth watching because you get an insight into Elon and you see a much more diverse person who only threatens them. He didn't file the threat. He didn't tweet the threat. He threatens them because they can't stop or control him. Well, Joe, that, uh, you know, David brings up a very big point when you talk about big tech and censorship, and that's what we have seen throughout this pandemic. Yeah. I mean, think two years ago, you started seeing anybody who questioned the origin of the virus was quickly censored from Twitter. Anyone who questioned the efficacy of the vaccine or was a proponent of natural immunity were muted or blocked or censored from Twitter. So what does this yeah. do? What is the future of social media when it comes to free speech? Because remember, those weren't conspiracy theories. Those turned out to be true. And the Hunter Biden story, probably most notably, right? October 2020, <laughs> just a couple of weeks before yeah. the election. And I, I mean, I can't believe in America this actually happened. If you shared the story from the New York Post, the oldest newspaper in the country, you got locked out of your account. Just ask Kayleigh McEnany, just ask the New York Post, just ask the Trump campaign, right? Uh, so, what does it mean for the future of social media? I believe was your question. Well, they're private companies and they could do whatever the heck they want. And until the government gets involved and starts to break up these monopolies, they're going to continue to act. Uh, uh, completely and totally like it's the Wild West. But as long as Democrats are in power, why would they ever really truly go after their biggest super PAC, who obviously now Facebook and Twitter, it, it's no longer social media platforms politically. They are taking on, uh, they've taken on an activist uh, position now at this point. So until there's a change of leadership in Washington and we actually go after these companies and break them up, uh, they're going to continue to act this way because they they have to, they can, they're, they're private. Well, you said it is the Wild West, and um, the Biden administration yeah. has actually been caught again. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.